Hello and welcome back to this series of uh, rigid connection calculation according to Eurocode 1993-18. In the previous video, we went through the introduction of the connection between a beam HEA200 to a column HEB300 with an end plate. And uh, we calculated the resistance of the column flange when it's under transfer spending. To continue the calculation, we need to check the columns web in transfer tension as well. Now we are going to check that part and calculate the resistance of this web, which is not stiffened. Here is our example. Uh, HEA200 connected to HEB300 with an end plate of 16 millimeter to 50 the width, 320 millimeter the height with 6M20 class 88 bolts connected to the flange. There is no back plate for this column in this example. Now we can continue with table 6.1. Here we can see that in table 6.1, item number 3, column web in transfer tension needs to be checked for, uh, again, individual row, row 1, row 2, and then for the group, row 1 and 2 together. If we look at the reference to application rules, design resistance needs to be considered uh, with the item or class 6263. And if you go through 6263, column web in transfer tension, Item number one, the design resistance of an unstiffened column web subject to transverse tension should be determined from FTWCRD according to the given equation number 615. Omega is a reduction factor to allow for the interaction with shear in the column web panel. For a bolted connection, the effective width B effective TWC of column web intention should be taken as equal to the effective length of equivalent T stop representing the column flange. So we went through this 6264 and we calculated L effective for uh, different applications, including row number one individual, row number two individual, row number one and two together as a group pattern. Item number four, the reduction factor omega to allow for the possible effects of shear in the column web panel should be determined from table 6.3 using the value of B effective TWC given in 6.2.6.3 item two and item three, which our case is for item three. To recap what we had in the previous video about the uh, column's uh, flange in transverse bending, L effective for row number one and row number two in circular pattern was 238 millimeter and L effective row one and row number two in non-circular pattern was 258 and L effective row one and two together as a group was 348 for circular pattern and L effective row one and row two as group non-circular pattern was 348 millimeter. As far as we are looking for the minimum capacity or resistance of the component, it's better to go with the minimum value of all L effectives or sigma L effectives that we calculate. So here 238 will go for the row one and row two as individual and 348, it doesn't matter. So it's the same for the group of these two rows. So now we can continue for the calculation accordingly. So according to the table, be effective one more time, better to have this. So now here we can write down that uh, for row number one as individual row b effective t web column is 238 millimeter for row number two as individual row b effective t w c will be 238 millimeter and row one and row two as a group b effective t w c will be 348 millimeter so we have these three for row one, row two, row one and two together. Then we have TWC as far as we have HEB300. The web thickness of the column is 11 millimeter. 
fy web column is 355 megapascal and gamma m0 is 1. The only parameter that we are looking for is omega, which is given in the other tables. So here is table 63 reduction factor omega for interaction with shear. Uh, we have transformation parameter named beta and reduction factor omega. It depends on beta and then we can select which uh, equation we need to use. Here we can see that if beta is between 0 and 0 0.5, then omega is 1. If it is between 0 0.5 and 1, omega is calculated according to the given equation. And when beta is 1 and so on. Omega 1 and omega 2, two parameters here in this table are given in the uh, last row. And also AVC, as uh, stated in the equations, is the shear area of the column. Uh, you can see 6261 and it is given that AVC is the shear area of the column according to Eurocode 199311. And for our column, AVC is 4743 square millimeter. So the only missing part here is beta, which we need to follow the other uh, clause for that. Beta is given to in clause 53 modeling of beam to column joints when determining the design moment resistance and rotational stiffness for each of the joints. The possible influence of the web panel in shear should be taken into account by means of the transformation parameters beta 1 and beta 2. Beta 1 is the value of transformation parameter beta for the right hand side joint and the other one is for left hand, so it's relevant to those columns which are connected with two beams from both sides. The transformation parameters beta 1 and beta 2 are used directly in 62727, 6321. They are also used in the other clauses in connection with table 63 to obtain the reduction factor omega for shear. Approximate values for beta 1 and beta 2 based on the values of the beam moments MB1 ED and MB2 ED at the periphery of the web panel C figure 56A may be obtained from table 54. So before we go through table 54, it is better to understand uh, about these MB1 ED and MB2 ED. So in figure 5, 6, uh, forces and moments acting on the joint. Here we can see that if you have two beams connected to one column, MB1 is the right hand joint connected to the column. The right hand bending moment of uh, beam connected on the right. And MB2 ED is the bending moment of left hand beam connected to the column so in our example we do not have two beams connected to our column we have only one beam so we can just assume that mb2 ed is zero also we have this uh, table 54 approximate values for the transformation parameter beta here we can see that the type of joint configuration and we have value of beta as approximation so if we have only one beam connected to the column it doesn't matter if it is in the middle of the column or it's uh, connected to the top of the column beta value can be taken as one and also the other uh, given instruction for for example these two cases if they are the same if it's greater than zero or less than zero or the summary is zero then you can use these values as beta for us beta equals to one if you want to have a more accurate uh, Calculation of beta, you can go to item 5.3, modeling of beam to column joints, uh, clause number 9. As an alternative to 5.3.8, more accurate values of beta 1 and beta 2 based on the values of the beam moments uh, can be taken from these two equations, 5.4a and 5.4b. Here we can see that if we are looking for beta 1, if we assume that we have only beam in the right hand, then MJB2 is 0. So here it will be 1. Here, coming back to table 63, now we know that uh, beta equals to 1. As a result, omega equals to omega 1. We just need to calculate omega 1 and then we will come back to the original equation to calculate the resistance of the column's web in tension. So 
B effective, we had 3 for R1, 238, for row 2, 238, and for row 1 and row 2, 348 millimeter. And then we can calculate omega 1 for all three cases. So omega 1 will be 1 divided by a square root of 1 plus 1.3 times 238 millimeter times 11 millimeter divided by 4743 square millimeter unit less value 1 divided by 0 0.85 0 0.85 and we just need to change 238 to 348 0 0.74 so we have transformation factor and now we can come back and calculate our ftwcrd for each option for ftwcrd here i can add Row number one as individual will be 0 0.85 times 238 millimeter times 11 millimeter times 355 megapascal divided by one equals to 790 kilonewton. FT web of the column or the row number two is the same 790 kilonewton and FTW column or the R1 and R2 together the value of omega is changed uh, so omega is omega 1 we know so 0 0.74 times 348 and then 11 355 so it will be 1006 kilonewton it means that column web uh, considering one row bolt has the capacity of 790 considering the second row bolt it has 790 kilonewton but in total, the entire group can resist up to 1006 kilonewton. Ignoring what we achieved in the column flange in transverse bending, here we can assume that if we are just thinking about the column web in transverse tension, the first row bolt can take up to 790 kilonewton, the second row bolt can take up to 790 kilonewton. And in total, these two can take up to maximum 1006 kilonewton. We calculated the column flange to be in transverse tension, and the result was 282, 282, and total less than 564. This is for column flange in transverse bending. If we just focus on these two components, we can see that the column web has more capacity compared to column flange in transverse tension as a result here the failure might happen sooner in the column flange compared to the column web so up to here the column flange in transverse tension is more uh, critical than the column web for these two components later on we need to go to other components to check what would happen that was the end of this video. We went through column web in transverse tension and we went through the uh, reduction factor and beta value, how to determine these two parameters and we calculated the resistance. We noticed that the column web has more capacity than column flange in transverse tension. These values are only valid for this example and in other examples or tasks, it might be completely different. In the next video, I will go through end plate under bending and we will go through the code and calculate the resistance of the end plate. See you next time. Thank you for watching and be in touch. Bye.